Having said all of that, I want us to start our study of the veil, not at the tabernacle where it was put up physically, but I want us to go and see when it was put up spiritually or doctrinally. Did you know there was a time before Moses when man actually lived beyond the veil in the very presence of God? A time when man walked with God in his very presence? That place is called Eden. And I want to start there before there was ever a veil put between God and man. I want you to turn with me to Genesis chapter 3 and let's examine this time when the veil was hung. I do not know how long Adam and Eve lived in Eden, but they lived a time in the Garden of Eden in the very presence of God. There was no curtain of separation between them. Perfect man who had no sin and a holy God had perfect unbroken communion and fellowship. They walked together hand in hand in the perfect world, side by side, enjoying each other in the cool of the day. The Holy Spirit calls this place of rest Eden. But then man buys a lie from Satan that he can live his life apart from God. This is sin, and sin brings death. It is sin that caused God to expel man from Eden. In Genesis 3.21, Moses says, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. I put this verse here for a reason. If there was ever a time when Adam and Eve were saved as we know salvation, it is pictured here when God clothed them with animal skins when blood was shed to cover their sins. Hebrews makes it plain that the blood of bulls and goats could never remove their sins. Their sins were only rolled back by these sacrifices until God made a way for them to be removed. Hebrews says their sins were not removed until the death of Jesus. Salvation in the Old Testament was by promise on God's part and by hope on the people's part. I just want to make clear that when God put Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, they were what we refer to as saved people. They were in God's graces, but they were out of God's presence. This is a picture of the entire Old Covenant. Israel was in God's graces, but they were shut out from His presence by a veil In Genesis 3:17, And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. This field here called the ground has, is of man's making. This earth has been cursed, and God said, it's because of you. He calls this cursed ground later a field. Man must now eat of that field which he has made. Man must now eat of what sin produces. Man will spend his life working in this field of sin. All that will be produced in the sweat of his brow will be pain, for this field will only bring forth thorns and thistles. And unless God intervenes, it will bring forth man's destruction. We saw that with Noah. And if God doesn't intervene soon in this world, we are doomed to destruction. We can see today the two sons of Abraham with weapons of mass destruction pointed at each other, ready to pull the trigger. Where does all of the suffering of the world come from? It comes from this field that man is working the flesh of man on the throne. Man is working this field. He is spiritually dead, doing that which is right in his own eyes. This then is the field outside the veil. And life is not pretty outside of the veil. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. 
And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. God drove man out of Eden, put cherubim to guard the way back in. Why? To keep man from the tree of life. God has established a barrier. A veil has been set up separating man from the presence of God. This barrier is pictured in the tabernacle veil, which has cherubim embroidered upon it. There were also cherubim embroidered in the covering of the ceiling overhead in both sections of the tabernacle. The veil is a picture of this barrier that now exists between God and man. The cherubim tell us that nothing unholy will ever be allowed in. The flaming swords say that nothing enters that it cannot pass through God's wrath. Until a way is made to enter, man is shut out from the presence of God. Even Adam, a redeemed man, is shut out during this dispensation of law. Every saint in the Old Testament lived outside this veil. Adam, Eve, Abraham, the prophets, all of the saints lived their lives outside this veil. They were all kept outside because no way had been yet made to enter in. The writer to the Hebrews makes it clear that the blood of bulls and goats could not open this veil. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. The sins of the people under this first covenant were never removed until Jesus died on the cross. In, verse, in chapter 10 and verse 1, For since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come, instead of the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered every year, make perfect those who draw near. This covenant of law could never make them perfect. It could only roll back their sins until the ultimate sacrifice was made. And because they were not made perfect, they were kept outside the veil. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time, for all time, those who are being sanctified. The Old Testament saints were not perfected until Christ came to cleanse them. That's why when Christ died, the graves were opened, signifying that the Old Testament saints were now perfected and ready to be resurrection, resurrected following the resurrection of Christ. When Jesus died, the veil was torn in two for all time and for both dispensations. Since those cherubim and those flaming swords were there to guard God's holiness, nothing unholy could or ever will pass through the fire of those flaming swords. Hebrews says that the blood of bulls and not goats could not remove their sins. This being true, their sins were kept them outside the veil. Their sins were never forgiven. They were only rolled back each year on the Day of Atonement. And as sinners, every man will remain locked out by a veil 
until their sins are completely removed. What does it picture? The veil pictures the spiritual death of man. When Adam died, when Adam sinned, he died spiritually. He brought spiritual death to man. And when God drove them out of his presence, it was a picture of that death. The veil represents the spiritual death of man. Man is a tripartite being. Adam was created a living soul, but Adam was given Two parts. He was given a body in which he came alive to this world, and he was given a spirit with which he came alive to God and to spiritual things. Death in the scriptures is separation. Physical death is experienced by the death of our body when our bodies and our souls are separated, when we are separated from our bodies. The spiritual death is when we are separated from God, and it happened to us and Adam pictured when God drove him from the garden. When man was created, God breathed into Adam his very own life. Adam's spirit came alive with the very presence of God. Eden is a picture of that time when man was spiritually alive. Adam was ruled by his spirit and not by his flesh. But Adam, when he bought the life, he turned his own life apart from God when he ate of the fruit. He died spiritually. Now the body which is called the flesh has taken God's place on the throne of his heart. And the flesh is nothing but a pawn of Satan. God must now drive him out of Eden for the very same reason that Satan was driven out of heaven. God said man has become like us. He has become his own God. And in, a, in the presence of a sovereign God, there can be no other gods in his presence. The flesh will not reign in his presence. So God drives him out of Eden. Man is now spiritually dead, and God put up a veil as a picture of that spiritual death. Now why did God put up a, that veil? We see that in verse 22 here, that to keep man from eating of the tree of life and living forever in this state of sin. The veil was put up to, to protect man from eternal death. Evidently, if Adam had eaten of the tree of life before he sinned, he would have received eternal life with God. But if he ate of it after he sinned, he would have received eternal death away from God because he would have died physically and separated himself from God eternally. Now let me explain what I'm talking about here. The tree of life is pictured in the tabernacle as the ark and the mercy seat. The ark is a picture of Jesus Christ in his resurrected glory. Inside the ark was the covenant of the law. The veil was put there to keep man from this ark. For a sinful man even to look upon it or touch it is to bring physical death. Once dead, man is doomed to an eternal state of separation. If Adam had have eaten of the tree of life in his sinful state, he would have died physically with no further hope of salvation and doomed to eternal death. God put the veil there for our protection until a way is made to enter. It was for Adam's benefit God drove them from the garden. Now, as we return to our study of the tabernacle, maybe now we can better understand 